Hi, my name is Matt Johnson. I'm with K-Bands Training. We're going to talk about some baseball mechanics. The first, the most important part of baseball in, in terms of hitting is that we have to have a good, solid lower half in order to drive the baseball. So when you're setting up in your, in your hitting stance, you need to make sure that you have proper weight on the inside part of your toes where the ball of your foot meets your big toe, and that pressure point is there where your legs are wider than your shoulders, and you have a good, uh, good solid stance. As you work up from the bottom of the feet up to the knees, the knees to be locked in and controlled. You need to have pressure points on the inside parts of the knees, right where the lower leg meets the upper leg at the knee joint, right behind the knee. You need to have strong, strong control there. It's almost like you're holding a ball between your legs. And then as you work up to the hips, you want to make sure that you have your hips are directly underneath your shoulders. If your butt isn't sticking out, you want to make sure it's directly underneath and towards the ball. All right, now that we have explained how the base setup should be before you swing, let's talk about the lower hip rotation and, and the drive through the foot. So as you set up, we talked about pressure in the balls of the feet, inside parts of the knees, and making sure that our hips are directly underneath our shoulders. Now as we start to load and we go back, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, whatever back leg that you have back, you want to make sure that that knee stays in tight here and that pressure stays in the ball of the foot. So as we load back, this back hip never gets over the side of that back leg. We want to maintain like we're holding a ball in between our knees. Now as we stride and we get ready to drive forward, we have to land soft on the front leg and then we push through that big foot or big part of our toe, through the big toe, all the way through our hip. It's not a rotation or a squish, it's a drive. Just like if we were getting ready to take off and run, we would have an explosion push from the bottom. We wouldn't twist and then take off. We want to make sure that we keep it locked in. We drive, we push, we explode. That way our hips are going in one direction and we're not taking our weight and twisting it off towards the third or first base side, depending on if we're left or right handed. We want to make sure we keep everything in line. That front leg lands soft, we keep the weight inside, and as we get ready to rotate, that back part of the front knee actually pulls backwards towards whatever side that you're standing on, pulls back, and then you get that full explosion, and that's where that weight transfers and everything eventually transfers through the ball. All right, now as we move to the hands in terms of our base setup, we want to make sure that we are comfortable and relaxed, just like we're talking to somebody. We don't want to be all hunched over and uncomfortable and tensed up. The more tensed up we are, the tougher it is to swing when our muscles are tight. We want to make sure that we're relaxed. A good rule of thumb is always to have your back hands off the back part of your shoulder. Okay, we want to make sure we have our knocking knuckles lined up. And for those that don't know the knocking knuckles, these are the ones that we'll knock on the door with. We want to make sure they're lined up. We have a nice comfortable stance. Our hands, good rule of thumb is that both of our hands need to be above the armpit level. We need to be comfortable and relaxed. Front elbow needs to be down. Back elbow can be down or up. That's a personal preference in terms of relax. But if that elbow gets too high above that shoulder, we have a tendency to be too loopy with our swing. We want to make sure relaxed and comfortable, good loose fingers, and, we, and that we're able to go through the zone. Once we get ready to load, okay, then everything starts to tense up. All right, now as we move into the swing portion of our hands, we want to make sure, once again, just as a review, we want to make sure we're relaxed in our hands, our hands are above our shoulders, uh, and we have good knocking knuckles lined up on the bat, front elbow down, back elbow in a comfortable position. We're relaxed. Okay, now as we get ready to go through, we've already talked about our lower half, but as our lower half continues to drive, our upper half is going to separate. Okay, so our hands are going to go back, not down, they're going to go back, if anything, a little bit up. And then as we come forward, we're going to get elbow drive down to the ball, and we're going to pull through with our bottom hand for about 10% of our swing. Then our top hand is going to continue to punch. So as you think of it, you want palms forward and backward. And then as we get ready to make contact, we're going to have palms up, palms down at contact point. We want to start that loop at about six inches behind the ball, finish six inches after contact through the ball. Because as we make contact, our elbows need to be bent at contact, and then we get the last little push of explosion through the ball, and then we finish our swing. Whether you finish two-handed or one-handed, we want to make sure we keep everything moving north and south. We don't want to go east and west. We want to stay north and south with our hands, with our hips, and drive through that baseball and transfer everything that we've done from the toes all the way up, through the bat, through the ball, and that's where we get the carry. Okay, now as we move up through the head in, in terms of mechanics and positioning, we want to make sure that our head is in a relaxed position and always level. We never want to have our head tilted, and we also want to make sure we never see the bridge of our nose as we're looking towards the pitcher. As we start to look towards the pitcher, this bridge of our nose should disappear. So if you can see the bridge of your nose as you're looking through your back eye, we want to make sure we open up that head a little bit more so we're able to see with both eyes on the baseball. As we start looking to make contact with the baseball, our head needs to be tracking the baseball from all three zones. If you think of it from release point, 
to contact, there's three zones in that vision. First zone is when it's coming out of the hand. The second zone is about halfway in between the pitcher and the hitter. The last zone is as it's coming about 10 feet away from the plate. You want to make sure that you track it all the way through to point of contact. Good rule of thumb is that you want to keep shoulder or your chin to go from shoulder to shoulder. That chin needs to go from shoulder to shoulder and track the baseball at contact all the way through. The last thing that you want to do is miss it in one zone or peek up too soon uh, before you make contact. For more information and drills, please go to kbandstraining.com to learn more on how to perfect your swing and to make you a more efficient baseball player.